So today we have uh, a panel of speakers uh, that will be discussing on the topic uh, demystifying digital twins of cities. Uh, with us, uh, we have uh, Saibal uh, Shaudhuri. He'll be our moderator for today. So without further ado, I'll hand this over to Saibal to introduce the panel of speakers uh, and do enjoy this uh, session. Saibal, over to you. Thank you, Azar. Uh, pleasure to be here and um, um, it's uh, a pleasure to be in, in that uh, e excellent topic. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Uh, a discussion with three distinguished panels today on an exciting and fast emerging topic of digital twin of cities. My name is Saibal D. Choudhury and I'm your moderator today. I'm co-founder of Urbanetic and I would now ask each, like to introduce to you uh, each of our distinguished speakers or panelists. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce Li Xiaoqing. Uh, she is a technical principal of infrastructure development and economics and, uh, and Mott McDonald. Um, she has 18 years of experience and devoted herself to focusing on sustainability development and in most recent years on smart city, which is to make use of smart technologies to achieve sustainability goals more effectively in more efficient way. Uh, I also have uh, Tomo Hishashan, uh, or we call him Tom, uh, he liked to be called. Uh, he's a senior manager of global business planning and marketing department, uh, Life Solutions Panasonic Corporation. Um, he's engaged in decision making and consensus building support, consulting services on city planning in Japan. Um, he has written articles um, on OGC and city GML, uh, and he has been in the business planning manager of urban planning support virtual reality for 17 years in Panasonic. And last but not the least, Philip uh, Bilieski, uh, assistant professor in NUS. So we have two industry experts and one from the academia, and which is exciting, uh, who is on the cutting edge of research. Uh, he is a faculty at the National University of Singapore, where he heads the Urban Analytics Lab, a multidisciplinary research group advancing geospatial technologies and urban informatics. Uh, his background is geomatic engineering, and he holds a PhD degree from the University of Delft of Technology in the Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me start with uh, Li Xiaojing to spend five minutes to talk about uh, what he, what her ideas about, and as we uh, about digital twinning of cities, particularly, and as we say, there are a lot of information on the internet about digital twin today and we would like to demystify them, make it very practical, and like to see where, how people can implement these advanced technologies and actually benefit uh, from social, economic, as well as in, in environmentally. Over yeah. to you. Thank you, Zabo. Yeah, it's uh, uh, my pleasure to be here today to share some of my thoughts. So I think just to uh, kick off this, uh, conversation or discussions later, I'll just uh, share uh, a bit more on where actually I'm uh, coming from uh, so that uh, everyone uh, that have a base uh, ground understanding. So uh, we, uh, as uh, just sharing my screen, hopes you can uh, see it now. Yeah. So uh, uh, I think that's just by way of introduction, Mark to McDonald, or what's our uh, beliefs around this uh, uh, built environment and the infrastructure world, uh, so which is uh, might be beyond this uh, digitalization itself, but it's uh, we are actually serving a bigger purpose to improve the social outcomes to all the projects we deliver. So I think this is a, a critical elements into the discussion of digital twin, why we are having it uh, by itself. So we are in the way of uh, objective really uh, to deliver a different, different uh, I mean, uh, focus on the social outcome itself. Uh, and also as uh, Saibo uh, introduced that uh, we really pay a lot of attention to the sustainability aspects being to putting our outcomes to leading for achievement of sustainable development goals. And then we are actually also quite uh, uh, actively being uh, lead the thought uh, uh, 
aspects uh, for uh, sustainability as well to deliver a lot of the thought leadership piece of uh, so this is not only to deliver the projects itself but we strongly believe in leading by examples which will uh, uh, be showcased by our uh, certification and the uh, uh, the risk to uh, zero and also we are certified under the carbon neutral uh, as a company itself and also we uh, by leading this uh, the outcomes of sustainability or social outcomes we are actually uh, beliefs in how the digital could help us to transform the industry and the delivery uh, of more efficient outcome itself. So this is a, a internal uh, platform, digital platform that uh, we have uh, within Mott McDonald itself is Mowata. So there are many cases, use cases being explored and solutions being deployed for projects across the region. So we can sh share later during the dis discussion when, uh, as well. So I think that's, uh, the key is really that the digital is really need to serve a purpose to answer the question about why we are doing it and then to find the right solutions of the right level of uh, 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 in-depth into that. So for, for that, I will uh, leave uh, for the opening introduction and then look forward to, to the next discussions. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Xia Qing. I will uh, now um, ask Philippe uh, to talk about uh, more about your, your thoughts on the digital twin of cities. Hi, good morning. Uh, actually, it's not morning anymore. It's already noon. Hi, everyone. Thank you for uh, having me uh, here. I'm really pleased uh, to take part of this uh, panel. Uh, I, in the next five minutes, as an introduction, I'll just like to uh, introduce uh, my research and the research of my research group uh, at NUS, the Urban Analytics uh, Lab. We are a relatively new research uh, group, one of the first of its kind in uh, Singapore and Southeast uh, Asia, because uh, we have a geospatial focus. The main areas of our interest are spatial data infrastructure, digital twins at the urban scale and data-driven urban studies. We have a strong focus on everything open, like data, software, uh, open street map, uh, and open standards. One of our mission is to investigate the application of uh, AI techniques uh, in the urban context. So we look to transport the latest developments in computer science into geospatial science. One recent project that we had as a good example is the first application of deep learning in understanding the urban form. This panel is mostly about uh, buildings and uh, about digital twins that are about buildings. And this is quite uh, mirroring uh, our research focus, because even though we focus on the entire built environment, buildings as one of the most important uh, feature are uh, in our uh, research focus. And uh, buildings are quite interesting because they are essential for many use cases that are related to geospatial analysis and digital uh, twins. And also they are quite interesting to us because they can come in uh, different forms and uh, flavors from basic uh, footprints to 3D uh, models. I'd like to give a few examples of some of our recent uh, research just in the last uh, three minutes I have. What did we uh, do when it comes to uh, spatial data on buildings that relates to digital twins? So we've been working on generating 3D models from uh, open data that can support uh, digital twins, mostly by looking into two venues, government data and open street map. While doing so, um, the first step was to understand the quality of uh, existing data. So we started the first project in the world of its kind to benchmark uh, government data sets on buildings. We found uh, more than 100 uh, data sets from 28 governments around the world. Uh, we found, for example, that uh, most of the government data sets are not suitable to generate 3D models because they don't contain enough information. And on the crowdsource side, we looked at uh, OpenStreetMap data for, for example, Southeast Asia, and we have uh, located locations where we can generate uh, 3D models completely freely and openly 
one of these examples in Singapore, where we generated a 3D model in uh, CityJSON, which we have uh, released uh, openly so anyone can download it and use it uh, for any purpose. Uh, other research is, uh, for example, using uh, latest developments like generative adversarial networks to generate uh, data. For example, we discovered that we can generate building data only using street networks uh, entirely from scratch. So we developed uh, GenMapper, which is our latest uh, project that um, uses uh, Gen technology as a completely new way to generate spatial data and uh, project scales across uh, uh, different urban morphologies uh, around the world. So we tested it in nine cities around the world. This leads me to uh, our next research is global building morphology indicators. We have uh, used this data around the world on more than 500 million buildings to compute urban morphology metrics that can be used by urban scientists like uh, in microclimate simulations. And in this project, we had the support from AWS because it's truly a huge data set. And finally, uh, the last uh, example is also quite recent. We just finished a project called Roofpedia. It's the first global open registry of roofs for urban sustainability. So we developed a pipeline to automatically detect uh, solar roofs and green roofs in uh, several cities around the world. We mapped more than 1 million rooftops to understand how popular and how prevalent these sustainable roofs are. Uh, here on this slide, you can see uh, the example of Singapore, all the rooftop uh, solar panels that we detected using satellite imagery. Aggregating this data, we came up with our uh, rank list of cities by, they, by their power and success uh, of unlocking the uh, space on rooftops for uh, solar panels and uh, vegetation. So I'll stop here, uh, and I look forward uh, to this discussion. Thank you, Philip. That was exciting, at least for me. And uh, as you know, that all of us have been somewhat struggling to get um, all the cities uh, very quickly build their own simplified LOD one, at least uh, your digital twins. Now let's go back to go to um, uh, Tom. Uh, Tom, you have a, a wide experience in the city, uh, in, in the industry for 17 years, uh, especially in the visualization front, say, for example, right? So I think we'd like to talk about your ideas and, 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 and uh, about the digital twinning of cities uh, based on how, where we are today and where we are going. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'll share my slide. Okay, can you see my slide? Yes, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, oh, this is Tomohisa Oishi from Panasonic Corporation. I'm the manager of Global Business Planning Division. Uh, first, we, I will introduce my topic. Uh, the theme is uh, I Urban Revitalization on Digital Three Initiatives. Uh, oh, first, let me introduce myself and our company. Uh, it's mainly about the implementation of 3D city model data uh, in Japan. Uh, in Japan, uh, private companies have created so many 3D city model data of uh, municipalities since 1998. Uh, for my company, over 300 data sets of the municipalities uh, in the last 20 years. Uh, that means over 30% uh, of all the major cities in Japan. And at the same time, uh, regarding the 3D city model data in Japan, uh, we needed the visualization tools for, for consensus formation. Uh, in Japan, our uh, urban development is overly time consuming. Uh, it's difficult to form a consensus between stakeholders. Uh, so, we need to improve the experience of citizens by increasing uh, project transparency and increasing consideration of commonly held value. Uh, so, we have developed various visualization tools for many local municipalities throughout Japan. Mm, especially, uh, my company has developed uh, various tools with uh, VR or AR or other te uh, digitalization technology. Uh, uh, so this movie shows you uh, one of the use cases of VR or urban development in Japan by Panasonic. Uh, this case is for Shibuya City. Uh, 
uh, you may know. Uh, they are now constructing the smart city in this site for the future. Uh, we supported them uh, to make a consensus among so many stakeholders towards the complete of this project. Uh, and next, uh, about the issue of 3D city model data for consensus formation. Uh, despite the accumulation of 3D city model data, uh, the problem in Japan uh, was that uh, geometry only 3D city model or with no semantics uh, continued to be created. It might be much more effective for urban planning sites so to use uh, 3D city model with semantics. Uh, Okay, so uh, about I urban deratization, uh, it's an uh, information infrastructure for data driven uh, urban planning and urban devitalization, and it harmonizes data sets for visualization and some analysis. Uh, this effort is conducted by the Japanese government. Uh, various data sets of uh, different formats uh, collected from 1,700 cities will be combated by their respective municipalities. And so that uh, now in Japan, we can enhance the effect of consensus formation through so many systems via IUR application. Uh, for example, I'll show you one case study. Uh, we have developed the AR consensus formation system. Uh, this system uh, shows you uh, uh, one use cases of implementation of C uh, city GML data of some cities. Uh, you can... Uh, see the geospatial data uh, via your uh, smart class, uh, for example, HoloLens or HoloLens 2. And you can share the same geospatial data sets uh, with your colleague or uh, friend or uh, other people. And you can study the urban planning about uh, your target site. Okay, so uh, conclusion about the 3D city model data for sustainable distance swim. Uh, I think there is so much possibility that various players involved in Japanese city planning will use 3D city model data standardized by IUR con consensus commission for business development in the future. And then it will be possible to approach the realization of digital swim uh, that the Japanese government and we are even for. Uh, so that uh, there might be some issues in Japan. Uh, for next page, you can show you, uh, you can uh, know uh, the progress of Japan. Uh, it's Project Plateau uh, by the Japanese government. Uh, in this April, uh, Japanese government has structured 3D city models uh, of 56 cities uh, or districts in Japan. And you can display and use 3D city model in open data format. Uh, city GML. And uh, we can confirm so many use cases of 3D city model by each cities. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Saibal, uh, you're on mute. Uh, thank you, thank you, Tom, for uh, for an excellent presentation, and uh, uh, that was uh, uh, quite interesting, quite exciting. Uh, talks about all the new stuff. Um, I would like to come uh, to start now uh, the discussion of the panel, um, and I would like to start again with you, Tom, um, uh, because uh, we would like to know that. If you look at Japan, if you look at Singapore, we have been spending an, an enormous amount of funds, government funds, uh, to build these. Uh, so I would like to know what is the exact technical, social, uh, um, and, and environmental and economic benefits uh, that either you envisage or you have so far uh, gotten from a Japan experience. Uh, the outcome uh, primarily from there, what use cases have been developed, what benefit the people and the economy has uh, reaped from these uh, initiatives. Uh, okay, uh, I think uh, that work for uh, digital scene uh, by Japanese government, it's very important for us uh, because uh, in Japan, um, I think, uh, it's difficult to uh, uh, make a consensus commission 
uh, about uh, urban planning or uh, other issues, uh, but uh, they have no system or scheme uh, for solve it. And uh, I think uh, the benefit for all the people in Japan, uh, firstly, uh, I think um, it's uh, the digital thing uh, make us uh, prevent, it, prevent uh, the disaster of nature. Uh, in Japan, um, so many uh, disasters uh, occurred uh, in these years, uh, earthquake or typhoon or uh, uh, several uh, matters. Uh, so uh, there are so many disasters in Japan. Uh, but I think uh, this thing uh, will make it, uh, uh, will, um, what to say, how to say, uh, you can simulate uh, the future uh, prospects of the uh, future, and we can uh, prevent the disaster, and we can uh, prepare uh, for the future. Uh, so uh, I think the first point is preventing a uh, disaster. And the second point, I think it's uh, education uh, for the um, children or uh, students. Uh, in Japan, uh, the uh, education of uh, uh, elementary school or uh, junior high school uh, um, has no digital tool uh, for them. Mm, but uh, I think uh, the digital thing or and uh, uh, 3D data uh, will make them uh, the chance of uh, learn the, how uh, their or your town or city uh, are making uh, by uh, Japan or government. Uh, so they can know or learn uh, the uh, real uh, process of uh, the city planning or urban planning. Uh, so uh, I think the second, second point uh, is uh, education. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That, that's interesting. Again, um, I like to add a comment just to, to, to re, uh, I won't say reset, just to, to re, uh, uh, iterate uh, the definition uh, for, for, for the audience. Uh, as you picked up, that di the, the digital twins of cities are the uh, digital replicas of physical cities in a way that you can run simulation by changing their own data or taking external stimuli in, from the sensors and other information that you get into the digital model and see multiple scenarios you can analyze. Now, from that perspective, digital twins are a great tool to solve problems, as you mentioned, right? Now, let's talk about uh, problems could be disaster modeling, for example. Then you can have countries like in India and Cambodia where the monsoon comes in, the sanitation uh, is poor, um, and, 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 and you have uh, uh, issues with your stormwater management, then you wanted to basically check how, what kind of problem they can solve to reduce the number of uh, disease and other health uh, 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 problem that create after the monsoon. Or somewhere else could be a different problem of you built a city like in Brasilia or maybe Putrajaya and nobody wants to live there, say, for example. What is the problem? So different cities have different problems. Now, what I with that, I like to ask Philip, as you are basically what my my question would be to for the sake of audience, what are the minimum data set is required? And based on depending upon what kind of problems that we have, um, I will also get back to uh, 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 Xiao Qing later on on SDG, uh, uh, SDG 11 or, or other SDGs. But let's start with uh, um, Philip to, to tell the audience, what are the minimum data sets required for different kind of problem solving? Uh, is it a traffic related problem or monsoon related problem, earthquake related problem? That could be easy for different kind of min different municipalities to know where to start and what kind of data sets to build. All right. Uh, you mentioned that uh, we, have, we also have to talk about the definition of digital twins, so maybe that will also serve as a good basis to answer this question. Uh, yeah, I'm an academic, so I like definitions. It's, it's in the job description. Uh, I think the definition of uh, digital twin may be a bit of a, a contentious issue because uh, today uh, lots of things are called digital twins across uh, 
different domains, different uh, stakeholders. And on top of that, it is compounded by a fact that it's uh, maybe too much of a hype also these days. And uh, also, perhaps uh, many stakeholders are also trying to um, rebrand their existing uh, products uh, as digital twins, which may be not really digital twins yet. Uh, for me, uh, I'd like to go with the relatively well-accepted definition that uh, what you said, uh, digital twin is a replica, a virtual representation, but also one that serves as a, a real-time uh, digital uh, counterpart of the reality. Uh, in one way, that remains like a theoretical definition, but uh, on the other hand, like uh, in practice, we don't really have them yet uh, realized, so it's a bit difficult uh, to talk about specific data requirements. Uh, regardless of the definition, I think that uh, the minimum requirements is that a digital twin must have three elements based on this definition that I have just uh, mentioned. First, it has to be a replica. So if you talk specifically about data, uh, maybe I'm a bit biased because my background is in 3D city modeling, but uh, I would consider a 3D city model uh, as the bare minimum here. Uh, the second uh, element to satisfy this uh, definition is that it has to enable simulations. Uh, and this is something that uh, we already do have with 3D models. And we can use 3D models for uh, many purposes, like uh, wind flow analysis. But perhaps uh, the third element, uh, based on this definition, that 3D city models don't really have yet is the real-time aspect. And uh, this is something that digital twins uh, really add, in my opinion. Uh, but this is also missing in, in, uh, in practice. It's quite, quite rare. Uh, so uh, the real-time aspect is the bare minimum uh, data requirement, uh, in my opinion, uh, to really achieve uh, digital twins that would enable a true, truly uh, realistic replica uh, of the of the built environment that would enable uh, si si simulations. Uh, so only only a real time dynamic data set can be called a digital twin. Yeah. That's, that's so, the minimum requirement. So Philip, uh, my question was uh, this is the fundamental. My question was different cities have different problems. Okay, so yeah. and we have different kind of ways to collect data. Uh, a BIM can be, uh, some people may say, a baseline asset model. Let's talk about LOD 4, 3, 2, and 1 perspective, right? Say, for example. So let's say Tom said that the city GML model that it was in Tokyo and you are able to do disaster modeling. If somebody wants to do simpler things, so what I wanted to ask is that different cities with different problems, what would be a different data model, what LOD levels that city should pursue? Uh, could LOD 1 as a start can give you a lot of information, a lot of simulation. That's what my question was, so that people could start with LOD1, which is the minimum bare minimum. All right, uh, so I think LOD1 may look simple, but it holds a lot of uh, value. Yes. Uh, comparing to LOD0 or the 2D footprints, it adds the volumetric component of, uh, of space. Uh, and uh, that's quite a huge jump because at this minimum level of detail, it already enables uh, stuff like climate analysis and energy simulations. Uh, it enables visibility anal analysis, for example. It can be useful in visualizations. Of course, they don't look as pretty as LOD4 models, but still they may look nice. Uh, but still, I think uh, uh, LOD1 perhaps belongs to the to the past decade, I think as a minimum data requirement nowadays, we should at least require LOD2 if you're, if you're talking about the, the level of data. If you're talking also about uh, the data formats, I think uh, the minimum requirement would be an open standard that would enable interoperability. So uh, OGC standard like uh, CTGML or CTJSON. Good, good, good question. So I will come back to you later, but let me go to uh, uh, Xiao Jing. Uh, Shashing, uh, you mentioned about uh, SDGs, you mentioned about sustainability. In your experience, what would you ask for, tell the cities who are actually under pressure now to achieve their SDG goals by 2030, uh, what kind, where do, should they start uh, building the digital train so that they could actually, uh, in the next uh, eight years or nine years is left, uh, they could actually show uh, they have achieved uh, uh, the, the, the SDG uh, goals of the cities? 
Right. Uh, I think that's a, a, a really great uh, start. I mean, for each of the cities that they do want to, I mean, I mean, the whole world is under the pressure of achieving sustainability and then the carbon reduction related to the climate change. So that's the key uh, high alert of action that uh, all the cities or your development that you, sh you should be looking into. Uh, I think uh, that's a uh, uh, exactly the case that for each individual city or the projects, your issue or your challenge will be different. So that's where actually uh, the the step that you took in will looks pro probably looks like uh, uh, you need to uh, really deep dive into the sustainability goals that uh, to see where you are as a city or as a projects. And then also well, will be a baselining on where you can actually, where, where you are lacking. So that's where you, you will be able to develop the, uh, the right uh, roadmap for your city to achieving that. Uh, I think that's, uh, uh, that's by using a digitalization tool or the digital tool in a broader sense could help you uh, uh, to make the whole process more effectively. Uh, I, I believe that so actually uh, also goes back to the, uh, the definition, as I mentioned, that what digital twin means, because it's really the, the, the dem definition could mean uh, different things and confusing. I believe that for the projects that uh, Mott McDonald has been worked on, it's diverse at different skills as well. So we work on like a city skill type of digital twin, which just for example, that under the Future Cities program, we works on uh, uh, integrated uh, mobility management system, which is to particularly solve the issue for uh, Eskandar. Uh, so that's uh, really uh, just from that angle. So we use the digital to focus on the uh, mobility transportation aspects to solve, to help to uh, basically solve the, 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 the issues to move to a greener or low carbon mobility in the future. And then for the Thailand, that will be a different case because we're using the digital twin actually to develop a, a evidence-based flooding monitoring to really help to, uh, to inform the citizen uh, on the, the future flooding uh, alerts and how to reduce this uh, uh, the the actually the the co the the damages to the city uh, essential and also that's the city level and then, but at the same time we do help the clients at the assets level so this is more about either a property or a, a airport level uh, assets level of digital twin which we are actually uh, for the objective is really just for example that uh, probably for a property assess project we work on is really helping the client to identify the carbon hotspots for their uh, property assets across the global to really see what they can do to bring down the carbon emissions and then to improve the efficiency in the buildings and then for the airport it will be uh, related to the future maintenance or the whole supply chain management as, as well. So that's a, uh, I believe that's a, uh, the digital twin, as I mentioned, you need to serve a purpose to solve the problem and to find the right solution at the right scale and to deliver the uh, envisioned outcomes more effectively. So, so come back to you uh, that um, I, I remember when I started digital twinning in 2011, I remember 2012, right? Uh, yeah. The the most important, I mean, I was working with SOMs of the world and, and, and agents of the world those days. And the most relevant application, the use case was sustainability calculation. We used to call them parametric modeling tool rather than uh, digital twinning, right? Now that has not changed yet, right? So I wanted to know uh, that is, and we were actually working probably LOD1 those days, primarily. You have a volumetric calculation and you have all the data, you have orientation, you have uh, sun's insolence and you have a microclimatic analysis. They were enough to basically generate. Do you think that is still relevant today that uh, for the cities uh, who want to go into SDG to use the basic stuff with all the data? And do you think uh, that will, again, that uh, Philip, I, I'll tell uh, later on whether these data sets are readily available in all these cities or not. So to my question is that, 
are we ready to basically take the climate change uh, issue or the sustainability and energy emission uh, uh, traffic issues today, what, what, whatever we have today, rather than uh, waiting for uh, uh, more advanced technologies? Right. I, I think that uh, those modeling uh, would be still applicable in the sense that uh, it's driven for that purpose. So uh, I do believe seeing that uh, for the digital twin, I mean, the, the simulation and all that, right, is actually serving a purpose of achieving a set of the goal, which is customized to solve your problem or achieve your vision. So uh, I think on that, uh, just uh, to elaborate a little bit more on, on that, how actually that kind of uh, matrix could be carried out because uh, to, to achieve the sustainability, you need to start early uh, in the projects. So you, as actually that at the planning stage, you already have to have all these, uh, uh, what you need to do to uh, help you to achieve your vision already so that's where you have all the different metrics being uh, uh, identified carry through from the planning stage where all the different simulations will happen to see whether uh, your future development can achieve that goal okay. and also it will be carried out into the detailed design and also to the development stage and then in the future in the operation okay. so that should be a holistic from uh, from to the end all the way where you actually could use uh, different tools at a different stage mm -hmm. to serve these mm -hmm. uh, objectives you identify. So, so I go back to Tom now. Tom, um, uh, my question, uh, I have spent some time reading uh, on the Plateau Project, uh, as, as you showed today. Uh, uh, last month, uh, you know, uh, somebody called me up and, uh, and they asked me about what do I think about uh, LOD3, LOD2, or the city GM is the right way to approach to model the cities now. My, my thinking is like this, and I want your, idea, uh, you know, uh, your answer to that. You see, the buildings are designed not by cities. Buildings are designed by architects. Cities are planned by planners, okay? Uh, government can make those regulations, uh, sustainability regulation, building codes, and other things, right? Now, when we actually look at the digital twin that we are doing, and I'm talking about Plateau, it is an existing city, right? Let's say you need to basically um, either uh, refurbish or you need to change, make some changes or demolish and redo. Now, it has to go back to uh, the architect's table, right? Now, how do you envisage or how do you think that these existing models which are already built and you mentioned about lack of semantics is another issue how do you reconcile the architects and the private sector who are actually designing this infrastructure and buildings and the city gml data and what do you think about interoperability do you think it's already being done or we are still thinking about it because or we are still the two worlds we are living in the world of architects and planners in in, in and the world of uh, cities and the municipalities who have two different models and they are not talking to each other. Okay, uh, it's very difficult problem for us, uh, uh, but I think uh, it's uh, we have two uh, solution about it. Uh, one is uh, um, we can use the technology of the world or Singapore. Uh, for uh, connect the 3D uh, city model uh, of no semantics model uh, for uh, semantic model uh, by uh, ADE uh, or uh, data specification code or, or some technologies. It's one solution. And uh, uh, second is uh, we can deconstruct uh, all the model data. Uh, uh, in this study, or uh, our works uh, by Japanese government from uh, last year, uh, they constructed the 3D city model data uh, for the first time uh, by city GML data format. Uh, it origins um, basic survey of Japan. Uh, it has uh, uh, the, each municipality has uh, basic planning of, of their cities. That, that data has uh, the basic uh, semantics information. 
for or 2D or uh, text-based data, uh, we can use that database for 3D CT model. Uh, so it it might be easier for us to make uh, uh, 3D CT model data, uh, 3D CT model data with semantics. Uh, yeah. Okay. So so my question would be just a simple question would be. Are you, in your model, able to import um, a, a 3D model of a building done on Rhinoceros, say, for example, or a SketchUp, and directly import into your, your model, which uh, the plateau is, and, and it will just fit in and parameterize automatically? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, we can uh, combat or uh, import uh, that model. Uh, uh, we have some uh, techno uh, technological problem, but uh, the Japanese government has use case uh, of uh, LOD4 model to, to urban planning city model data. Uh, you mean to LOD4 city model on city GML, or you're talking yeah. about taking a rhinoceros uh, NURBS model and translating automatically into LOD4? Yes. You were able to translate that? Yes. Okay, that, that's exciting. Okay, so Philip, I want to come back to you because uh, we are almost there. Uh, the discussion has just picked up, actually, I would say. There's a lot to discuss, but I wanted to check about in your world of where we trying to say the interoperability. End of the day, this digital twinning and problem solving will not work if we are not able to, the data is not interoperable. Where do you think we are today with so many file formats and floating around and architects have their own world, the planners have their own world, and VGIS at geospatial 3D models have our own world. Uh, where do we reconcile everything into one? And where do we think that, uh, when do we think that will happen? Where that the user perspective, they will say, look, look we are there already and then, and, and, and everything will be fine. And this was the same problem I know in the 80s, where we had the same issue uh, on the manufacturing industry side. So we have now in the, in, in, the, in, in the construction industry, the same problem. When do you think that we will come to a point where we could reconcile everything into one? Mm, okay, uh, another controversial question. <laughs> uh, so maybe also a controversial answer is I don't think yeah, that's actually sure. possible. Be controversial, which is interesting for audience. Yeah, I'm not so optimistic like maybe many others. Uh, I don't think it's possible like to have all in one that everyone is uh, happy with. Oh. Uh, I think that uh, existing formats like each of them has been developed for a particular purpose, and obviously each of them has like pros and cons. Uh, one format, for example, I like was OBJ. It's yes. uh, pretty yep. good for computer graphics. It's yep. been around for decades. Yep. It's supported by, uh, I think, virtually any 3D uh, software. But on the other hand, uh, OBJ uh, was not built for our geospatial world. It lacks um, a geospatial and semantic component. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, CityGML. CTGML has brought uh, the geospatial and semantic component. For example, it brought us the option of storing uh, coordinate reference systems, meaning of features. It has been standardized by OGC. But on the other hand, it's adopted only in theory. In practice, it's not that much adopted. Even though it has been introduced about 15 years ago, it still lacks software support. And there are not that many data sets available. Most of the 3D models around the world are still not in CTGML. I mean, even, even the data standard doesn't really have uh, data samples. Uh, so uh, putting all this together, I don't think actually it's, uh, it's really possible. I don't think that we will uh, have like a, a standard or format that will make uh, everyone happy. If someone will endeavor to do that, we will just end up with another additional standard. OK, good. I think I, I will now I have a last question for all of you. Um, um, looking at the that uh, the, all the chaos we are talking about, that I think we have to thrive on in chaos uh, on chaos. I mean, we need to we, this will remain, and we need to make best use of it. If that is the case, what advice each of you would give to the cities, not the richest of the cities like Singapore or Tokyo or, 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 or London and others, but our cities within the ASEAN region, say for example, right? What, where, if they were to solve their problems using digital twin, where they should start? So each one of you, uh, I, I, I like to have that answer. So start with uh, 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 Xiaoqing. 
where they should start if yeah. they want to basically solve their problem using digital twin. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's uh, a few things I want to touch uh, touch on. Uh, besides the thing that I want uh, I mentioned earlier to look into uh, the challenge and then uh, to select the two appropriate. I think the key uh, for the uh, digital twin is also about uh, capability building for the cities because the uh, the, the key issue that we may uh, find that. Uh, is that one is really, if you develop the digital twin, uh, the maintenance of digital twin and the using, continuous using of digital twin will be challenging if you don't have the right people, right resources allocated. And then the other thing is really a, promote, a promotion of uh, uh, data sharing. So I think the one of the big challenge is really about the getting the right data for the digital twin to build up and to be used in the future. So that will be the key uh, uh, thing small hat. So first is really to identify the key issue and second to build up the capability and third is really to look into the uh, the, the thing that uh, can move with uh, for the for the next stage. Tom yeah, thank you, Tom. And okay. uh, and also, I would like to touch upon what should be the city. When I say city, uh, it's they must have the policy. The government policy is very important because that will drive the city's, uh, you know, funding and, and other stuff. So, if you could basically take a uh, touch upon that, what should be the policies and where each of these cities in us within ASEAN should start from? Oh, uh, I think. Uh... Regarding uh, the digital thing, uh, I think the most important thing is interface, interface of the uh, two species uh, between uh, physical land and uh, cyber data. And so uh, we must make uh, uh, a strong interface for the digital thing. Uh, I think it's very fuzzy, uh, but it may be the uh, 3D visualization tools or uh, analysis and consulting skill of people or the data encoding specification or uh, ADE. And I think uh, much more important thing is uh, uh, standardization of the data. Uh, it's uh, the OGC work or uh, uh, international work for us. Uh, so uh, in ASEAN or uh, uh, other city uh, besides Singapore or Tokyo, Oh, we must create the uh, strong standardization of the data. Uh, so uh, data format uh, will be a, a much more standard. Uh, we can uh, make uh, so many people to cooperate and try to utilize and exchange the data and uh, uh, make the digital thing uh, more effective in the world. Okay, good. So, yeah. Philip, I would like to change my question a little bit uh, there to be more because I think most of the cities here need some hand holding, uh, 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 not on a high level of, of uh, advice, right? So, I would like to know, knowing that the state that some cities, most cities don't even have a height data, forget about uh, doing a, 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 a digital twinning, right? So, when you have no height data, not a lot of data is missing. What what do you think that minimum they cannot afford to sit there and say I don't know what to do I don't have this right so talk to, to impress upon that, that that what should be the policy of the government what should be the minimum funding where should we go so that eventually next two to three years uh, that every city around uh, in in ASEAN uh, they should have a three D model uh, at least that we can do basic simulation. Okay, um, yeah, digital twins are an expensive uh, sport. Yeah. Uh, I cannot really like put the numbers. I don't have that much experience uh, in practice. How much? Uh, what's the minimum requirement? Mm. The one way to go around that is to uh, lift the barriers uh, from crowdsourced data, because today most of digital twins are purely governmental and commercial. Uh, that costs money. Uh, there is also the lack of democratization and adoption of a participatory approach. And I think that one way to make it cheaper is to lift the barriers to include crowdsourced data, to include the uh, participatory approach, enabling uh, citizen science, for example. OK. Uh, I have another question regarding the. I missed that question because, as you know, we do a lot of work on 
uh, open source, crowdsource data, use some drones, use some satellite data, use some existing uh, sheets from coming from Simulus. So we want to merge them, everything, and see what's the result. That's what we do for for a living. Um, and I saw some interesting thing. Cities in Philippines, they have more data on OSM and more accuracy data than the cities, uh, uh, let's say even Singapore is okay, it is not that bad, but I found uh, typically it's a huge dichotomy where the cities where they have no money, no, nothing, they cannot go in there, but you have a very rich data sets. Um, um, and if you go to Manila, if you go to a uh, near around, then even uh, if you go to say, for example, of course, Phnom Penh is nothing there. And also in Jakarta, uh, what is the reason? Because you did more study on that. Why we see uh, these kind of anom uh, not anomalies, are some interesting, uh, uh, you know, answers uh, on the uh, the crowdsourcing data. Okay, so uh, indeed, that's true, and that's why also crowdsourced data uh, is currently a very exciting uh, topic in the yeah. context of digital twins. I'm not in particular familiar with those examples that you mentioned, but I'm in general familiar with uh, what's going on in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, we have really enthusiastic uh, communities uh, who okay. are uh, doing mapping. But second, mm -hmm. uh, an overlooked participator in crowdsourcing are companies, mm -hmm. big multinational companies like uh, Grab, especially in Southeast Asia. Uh, they are investing a lot. Uh, to uh, map their own uh, map data on their own and okay. share it in OpenStreetMap for free for anyone uh, to use it for any purpose. So the role of companies in, is is increasing dramatically, and that's why we are seeing uh, excellent uh, data sets all over Southeast Asia that even may be better than some governmental data sets. Great, good answer. I I think um, uh, me and you must catch up sometime very soon. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, absolutely. There are a lot of exciting stuff we are doing. Um, I would like to turn to to um, uh, what you call is, uh, to the audience uh, if there is any question. Um, I have some um, some question from. Uh, um okay from from i think sounds like um um uh, xiao cheng's colleague um rahul jagannath malvia and his question is do we have all necessary asset information to build digital uh, uh yes yes uh, cities i feel this is the biggest challenge getting information at this broad level when we are struggling at small area of a city or a, of a planet, as an example, so who should, who would uh, uh, take up? Um, I can take on this, but but I would like uh, any one of you to pick up first. First of all, I like to qualify. What do you mean by the necessary asset information, like owner? Because the asset is a, to me is a legal term. Uh, before asset, it is a feature. Uh, so when you say let's say asset, uh, uh, is it uh, so 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 I say. Um, okay, so asset as a building. Let's look. Let's look at that asset as a building. And if you could answer that, do we have all the necessary asset information to build digital cities? So, so, so this is something that I, I like to clarify. But let's uh, give it to uh, um, um, uh, maybe Xiao Qing. You should take this question first. Yeah, I think that's a uh, that's a interesting point about uh, you also mentioned the necessary yeah. asset information. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah what you are trying to achieve yep. through the digital twin. So that's how you define the necessary. It will be uh, many different types of uh, data assess, uh, the, the data required yep. uh, to serve the purpose. I think the key is really yep. to serve the purpose. Yep. And uh, so also uh, uh, the challenge we do see, actually the big uh, gaps is in the data. Sometime is the, the amount of time to collecting the data that you required uh, to measure what you want to see or you and also if even you have the data the key issue that whether different owner of the data are willing to share all that i think that that's definitely a challenge across the projects we work on uh, yes my answer would be you know having interacting with 20 or cities and doing 10 uh, projects right I think there are two things which is missing uh, in, in, in many of the cases. I call it attribution and unification, which uh, uh, Tom uh, talked about uh, in general. We talk about semantics, right? How detailed, so you as, as, as a product developer, you must know how granular your attribute could be and what is your the, the unified model looks like. 
Only then you will be able to do the gap analysis. So if you don't understand that part, you would even not even know what is the gap between what the client has and, and what you can build. That, 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 that's one challenge that we, we see. Um, and so, so the idea is that understanding the missing points and then looking for them. And then if you see that, okay, you have a set A and you need a set B, understand the gap and go find them. So that's one way to approach, I would say. But you will never have a city. Um, we think at our uh, uh, level, I think that one of the most complete that I have seen is New York at the moment. Uh, uh, and then was the Melbourne. Uh, that's why even uh, any other example you see in little twin australia whether they're in sydney or other city they all come to to, to melbourne to, to show some uh, examples uh but philip uh what would be your answer to that do we really have um uh, the minimum um uh, data required for defining an asset again he said he said case to case cities are different every city in norway is different i saw and, and then i saw uh, you know uh, helsinki was different uh, cambodia is different uh, but my answer is that you need to know the model very well. What you, what is the minimum uh, viable uh, data set and attribute that you need, and then you do the gap analysis. Then you fly in your drones and other stuff and get all these data, and then make the uh, in a model. Yeah, uh, this uh, I must say a bit ambiguous and difficult question, and it was also partially answered with the crowdsourced and LD one discussion. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's even more difficult when we, I think, consider the digital twins have to be rich in data by definition. So uh, I think they need more than one data source. And one current problem is sharing uh, uh, data between different stakeholders. So by definition, all these minimum requirements to define an asset and so on come from more than one source. And these sources often don't talk to each other. So this is one of the yeah. key problems. And I give you one example. Please. Sorry. Yeah, sorry, uh, Sabo. I, I just want to chip in. Uh, so that's uh, even before we look into the data, what type of data uh, to identify the data gaps. I believe one fundamental uh, gaps would be the domain experts, which means that uh, you know transportation, you know the water infrastructure, energy infrastructure, uh, the planning, etc., to help. Uh, actually, before you go into digital twin to identify what will be the things that you can measure and what will be the probably the even to the formula actually to quantify all those things. And before we talk about yeah. what type of data will be required. Yeah. So that's yeah. just so yeah. before I move to Tom, I will tell you that just just start. we recently did one city, uh, one of the big, big uh, top tier cities in ASEAN, and we took six and a half years to collect the data to do to basically the LOD1 uh, a detail, LOD1, let's call it LOD2 because of much detail. But it takes that much of time and dedication and money uh, to basically, and the team, to collect. It took six and a half years uh, to get all the data for a small, small, of a small main city. So that's, that's basically my answer would be. And then, uh, Tom, uh, what would be your answer to do we have the minimum uh, data set available for, uh, for, uh, for assets in the cities, city assets? Okay, so oh, it's a very important uh, problem. Uh, I think uh, in the case of Japan, uh, it's important to make effective use of existing data or existing information uh, so that there is no cost to build a new uh, 3D city model. Uh, for example, a uh, basic uh, survey or city planning uh, information of Japan has uh, uh, each municipality has that information. Uh, in addition to that, that uh, maybe legal re regulation uh, and legal uh, reform uh, for private company uh, need to uh, make pri uh, private company uh, provide information. And I hope that uh, this initiative will uh, accelerate it. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, if any, um, any other questions? Um... Maybe um, if there is nothing from audience, maybe you can create one question. Um, uh, Philip, if you have a question uh, for the rest of us. Yeah, uh, so today there are many use cases of uh, digital twins and you're coming from different domains, working with uh, different stakeholders. Yeah. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, in your personal experience, what is the most convincing use case? 
I think the most convincing use case you already said is we find is uh, is is a climate analysis, sustainability, uh, because you don't need very complex uh, 3D model of cities. Um, so uh, so that I would say that we are uh, most cities here should be ready to embark on at least uh, with the, all the data set they have and whatever is the gap. We did an analysis of cost, how much it will take per square kilometer. We should be able to do to go ahead and do our SDG 11 at least. Uh, uh, to build, and that is possible today. Uh, the the only thing is that uh, it requires some more manual labor. And if I remember in New York, and and my partner was telling me, and in Melbourne, you would normally use uh, school kids uh, to give them a, a sandwich and a glass of orange juice uh, and and a foot rule to go measure all the trees and measure everything else. So there is a bit of a labor work those days. I'm talking about now. You have a cheap drones to pick those up. So yes, um, I think it is possible. Uh, that would be my uh, and that's what we are doing, uh, going into sustainability. And this is an interesting topic because don't say I want to do energy modeling, but you say, oh, we want to get you SDG, uh, then they are very excited. I mean, at least they're happy to, to get into this kind of project, but uh, funding is always the issue. Uh, the other thing what I saw when I work in this region is the first thing they say, we recently put together a system where we could take a sketch done in AutoCAD or a SketchUp and, uh, you know, uh, of a, uh, let's say, for example, a 50 hectare uh, township and we import it, okay, and then parameterize it. And the, the two things that use case, they really, everyone talking from developer's point of view, not municipality, is flooding and traffic. So this is actually 99% of the time they say, but my question is flooding and traffic, you need to do the entire city or a large portion of the district to do your because when there is a land available, not only you, the developer building a 50 hectare city, there's a next door, there's another one coming up. So I think what you need to do, the government has to get involved or, or the municipality to see when they do the land use planning early on, they should imagine and they should do the regulation, the height limit, the planning scheme, the other. That is where the issue is. We find that they don't think through to have a proper planning schemes assuming that this is how the city will look like 20 years from now. Thanks. Yeah, that, that's basic. So it is a role where academia, like Philip, like you, and the, the government, as well as the private sector, have to work together. And unless these three work together, I don't think we will solve the problem that we are facing today. The basic things, uh, even if we are ready with money to say, mm, we, want, we want to do it on time. So with that, um, I think we just um, um, uh, were on time, and um, I would like uh, to 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 uh, thank everyone and thank uh, SLA, the Geo, uh, the uh, the Geo Works, uh, to to uh, uh, to host this. I mean, this is an exciting topic, and uh, there is I think we could go on for hours. Uh, we would like um, anyone uh, who is interested uh, to actually uh, uh, write to or send an email to Geo Works. Uh, to get connected to any one of the experts to have their uh, expert opinion. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, it has been a, a great pleasure uh, to be here. Thank you, everyone. Uh, do stay tuned uh, to the the rest of the programs for from the SGGO Fest, uh, and we look forward to uh all audience all the audience uh, to to join us in 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 the later uh webinars that we have in store for you uh to saibal uh and our panel of speakers today uh thank you very much for uh gracing this uh webinar i think it's been quite insightful and and uh interesting uh discussion on digital twins uh with that uh thank you very much thanks everyone for joining this webinar Thank you. Thank you, Saibal. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. everyone. Great. Thanks.